hey what's up guys and welcome back to anime king 3 and today i'm gonna be giving you part 13 of what if naruto was the ultimate saiyan remember to get this one to 100 like as usual share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also guys go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if naruto at his strongest was sent to another timeline and enjoy that guys and remember for anyone this is the first time hearing my voice go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime king family and thank you for all of your help and support remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new i'll be playing talking back to all of you so yeah without further ado what do you say begin this new episode start the intro So the last spot we left off some way it was granted the opportunity to stay here for the month. While the children exams were going on by the Raikage after, she informed the man of her relationship with Naruto. Seeing this a way for the village to bond even more closely than before, the Raikage allowed it as Naruto had spoke near and about it as well. As she will be staying at his manor, Naruto was one of the proctors of Chunin exams. Well not a proctor per se, but he was there. When Uruchimaru attacked, as Orochimaru and Naruto got into a fight, the both of them clashed against each other in the forest of death. Orochimaru soon came to realize that Naruto was not a pushover, as he was far stronger than he had thought. The battle became chaotic rather quickly as both men clashed violently. But despite pushing his power up a bit, Orochimaru found that he was no match for Naruto. He had to exert his power, but doing so, he would be found by the Anvus. As Naruto went to exterminate him, but Urchimar used a snake to reverse summon him back to the Raikou cave. As the snake was also hit, showing how fast Naruto was, but Urchimar crawled out of the mount. As that boy was a lot stronger than he thought. Some time passed as Naruto informed Hirsen about this. As Naruto had taken Uncle to the hospital, he found out that Sasuke had the same mark that Uncle had. As Naruto had brought some way and Neri towards the preliminaries, as Neri and him had talked while they were in the forest, as Neri had talked about some way with him, Neri and some way had become good friends. The girl surprisingly was calm and cool for her to hang out with. Yeah, some way was a real cool person, and there was something that she wanted to tell Naruto about her. She didn't know why she was doing this because she didn't know when it happened or how it happened, but Neri. Start to feel attracted to him, something that she did not want to believe or say. Because he was so good friends with Samui, as she didn't want to ruin their friendship. As she was also good friends with Naruto as well, even though she couldn't stand him in the beginning, they became such good friends. The matches went off as Mito and her whole team had matched a pass for the finals. As over that month of training, as Jiraiya had taken Mito under his care, as he made her sign the tool contract and also taught her a few things. As Naruto had spent the time with Samui, and for the first time the both of them slept together. With Mito not in the house, let's just say it was a wonderful time. The time flew past rather quickly. As with that, the finals finally came around. As I was in the village, along the right tag and a few others, as I wanted to challenge Naruto once again. In a place that he wouldn't cause so much ruckus, as Naruto was known for that until the invasion began. As Mito went after the Jinjuliki of the sand, which was Sahara, as the group split apart, seeing the sound and sand ninjas, Naruto decides to activate the technique that he's been working on, as he used it as a substitute for the gates that Rock Lee and Guy could open, he called the Kaioken as he activated the first stage of it. With the enhanced speed and agility, Naruto was able to move around, as he decimated Sound and Sand forces, taking them out of the village one by one. As he was fast, none 
of the ninjas, not even Jonin levels, of their villagers could handle him. As Guy, I never once saw the red blur rush past them as Naruto decimated the forces. On the other hand, Mika was currently facing off against Sahara, as things went crazy when Sahara started to transform into Shikaku. As Mito had to be the one to stop her out there, as Naruto was about to check out the scene until he felt something as he made his way, arriving towards where the old man was. Naruto saw Hiros and took his last breath. As something snapped within Naruto, a memory had rushed through his mind of when he was younger, and the old man came in there to console him when it was the anniversary of his parents' death. As Naruto lost his mind in rage, as his eyes started to change into green, his hair started to spike up and turn golden, lightning, as the place started to shake, as Naruto started to change. So yeah guys, so basically that's what I thought of you guys can switch across the place and check out for yourself. So this is the beginning of this new episode. We begin this episode on top of Yamabunta, where Mito was currently at at the moment. Gamabunda large and massive water ball right toward Shigaku as it slammed into the overgrown Tanuki. Shigaku snarled with rage as he opened his mouth and blasts a ear combined blast of sand towards Gamabunta who will leap out of the way. As he pulled his tonto, the fighting came to a pause when a thunderous amount of dark clouds started to gather above the village. Around the entire land of fire it seems. The place got dark. The sun was blocked out completely. As Shikaku turned his gaze towards this abnormal strange power that fluctuated through the place. Mito glanced over as she saw lightning surging within the village. As she could feel an overwhelming amount of power. Just like when her brother released his old power. Something was wrong. Something was definitely wrong. As she turned back down towards Kemabunta, we have to end this, quick she said. Back in the village, thunder roared, lightning cackled. As the village was put on standby, every ninja that was fighting came to a stop. As a thunderous amount of energy swept through the area, Samoy came to a stop. As she glanced up, as she was side to side with Neri, the both of them looked towards where the massive purple dome was, which was cracking from the intense pressure that was being exerted. As they heard a scream, a shout of pure power by the voice, they both recognized it instantly. Naruto, they said. Back on top of the roof, the right Kagi, as much as he planted his foot on the solid stone and his forces, they were all blown away by the violent output of power. The ground cracked as it was shredded. Aruchimaru who stood inside of the dome, him alone seen a person had fall, and his little tenses were sealed away. As Aruchimaru started to sweat, the ground underneath him started to crack and give way. As the place started to tremble stone and debris started to fly. As the barrier started to crack, the sound for had to put in extra effort to hold on to it. As Naruto cocked his head back and screamed to the heavens, the final scream that seemed to shout power, as that is exactly what it did, a brilliant, bright, glowing yellow aura surrounded him from head to toe. As Naruto's eyes were pulsing green, smoke seemed to whip off his body. His hair had turned blonde as he shot up in the air. No longer in that familiar shape and curve that it was always in. As Naruto gaze settled right on the dome looking right through it as he focused on Urchimaru. As the era seemed to calm down, the presence that everyone was feeling suddenly started to dissipate slowly. All the rocks that were lifting up in the air started to fall back down. As Naruto stepped forward, his hands clenching and unclenching, his eyes focused on the barrier. As he seemed to be struggling with himself to gain full sense of his sanity, as he grit his teeth, his eyes clench, his fingers twitch. As he took several deep breaths, taking control of this new, raw, pure emotion power 
that brought forward so much rage. Once he opened back his eyes, a streak of electricity rushed off him as he got full control of himself. The right high in the envelopes appeared back on the roof as everyone was speechless as they looked towards the blonde. As Naruto stood there calmly, his eyes focusing on Urchimaru, before his gaze swept towards Terzin, who lay there on the ground dead. Orochimaru knew that he was in a bad situation. Kanoha was allied with Kumo. Given the fact that the Raikai gets stood there, this was not good. And not to mention, the damn one-tailed beast was being hauled off by that massive toad. This was not good at all. As he looked towards the sound form, he had to get out of here. The invasion had came to a big failure. His arms were sealed away. Curse that old man. And now he had this boy to deal with. As Naruto spoke, his voice seemed to have gotten a bit deeper. As his tone sounded calm as he started off. Despite all that you have done. Despite what you have turned into. He never wanted to turn his back on you. He always saw you as his prize student. Despite all your failures, all that you have done to this place, all the horrendous acts that you have done, the old man still loved you. He cared about you. He saw you as someone that was just misguided. Someone that he failed to save. And he also blamed himself. He blamed himself for not being able to save you. He blamed himself for being the one that made you turn out this way. And yet, you killed him, said Naruto as he gritted his teeth. And for that, you will not leave this place with your life. Aruchimaru looked towards his sound force and gave them a signal. As the group nodded, as they nodded towards each other. Kitamaru, the member with six arms, pulled out several tags of explosives. At that moment, they dropped the barrier. As he threw them, Naruto merely waved his hand as a pressure was exerted from it as he blew it away. As the explosives went off over to the side, forcing the Anvus to jump back, the Raikage stepped forward. No, said Naruto. As the Raikage turned towards Naruto along with his guards, he's mine. As Naruto flashed away in nothing but speed, Shocking the right eye at his movements because he did not see the now blonde as Naruto appeared in front of Urchimaru who stepped back in shock as he looked where Naruto was no longer standing. How? He said. I told you, you won't be leaving this village with your life, said Naruto. As he started calmly step towards Urchimaru, Jubo launched himself forward as he pulled his fist back and slammed it right into Naruto. To everyone's utter shock, Naruto still kept on walking. Jobo was alarmed as he instantly pushed his curse mark up to level 2. As his body started to take on a change right in front of Naruto, who barely seemed to take notice of him, his eyes were dead set on Urchimaru. It's been a long, long, long time since Urchimaru felt absolute true fear. And seeing this boy walking towards him, those green eyes, it petrified him. As Urchimaru didn't know what the feeling was, it was beyond fear as he started back away. Those eyes, the way Naruto calmly walked towards him, the man was scared. And it's been a long while since it happened. As Drobo clasped his hands and brought it down on Naruto, only for Naruto to pull his fist back and drive it in Drobo's gut. The fist was so powerful that you could see it from his back. Drobo dropped down to the ground as he started to wheeze and cough, its curse mark instantly receding. As his organs were ruptured from that punch, blood came from his nose and eyes. As he started to pour down his face, as Naruto turned and kicked him, he was thrown. It wasn't a normal kick by any standards as he was thrown so far, he broke through the outer walls of Kanoha, launching into the forest. Naruto was then surrounded as he was captured by all sorts of sticky webs from Kidamaru. Kidamaru then pulled out his bow and arrows and shot three arrows towards the blonde. As Naruto screamed as everything was blowing away, before he eventually grabbed two of Kidamaru's arms, 
Kitamar brought his two other arms up as he started to slam them in Naruto's chest. The other two ate Naruto's face. As Naruto gripped the two that he was holding onto as he started to rip, Kitamar screamed as Naruto tore them out of their sockets. Before Naruto gripped him by the face and started to squeeze, applying so much pressure, his head exploded in his palm. Orochimaru decided to use a distraction. Kill him now, he shouted towards Teiwaya and Seikon. As Orochimaru transformed his bottom half into a snake as he started to slit her out of here, with everyone focused on the blonde. As several Anvus turned their gaze on Orochimaru, they would not let him escape, but they were intercepted when a blast slammed into the ear in front of them. As they turned to see that it was from Naruto. I told you, he's mine, said Naruto. As Urchimar tried to flee, but Naruto did not seem to care. Seikon and Ukon move. As they knew that their life were probably going to be end, but they had to do as their master told, or otherwise, well, they would be on the receiving end of a brutal experiment. As Naruto saw them coming, he reached out to grab them, but they split apart at the right moment. As their bodies grew extra limbs, as they appeared behind the blonde. The both of them pulled their face back as they infused it with chakra as they drive it forward only for Naruto to turn. As he stopped their face with both hands. He then grabbed the both of them by the chest as he started to squeeze them together. Both of them started to scream out for bloody murder as Naruto gripped their heads instead after they thought he let them go. As he pushed their heads in together, he started to push and push until he heard a pop as the two bodies dropped down to the ground. Naruto then heard music as he vanished. Teiwaya blinked as she felt something behind her. She turned as she screamed as Naruto eradicated her with a blast. He then looked up as he took off the disguise. As he blasted away. The Raikage was still standing there. Shocked by the brutality but the power that the blonde was now showing. What exactly was Naruto? As he had never shown this in their fight. But it also seemed like he was just experienced as well. Someone landed behind him. Right, Hagisama. What's going on as he turned to see Samui? Meanwhile, Orochimaru was slipping away. As that little fool had blocked the Anvil from coming after him. Suddenly, boom! Orochimaru was blasted back as all the stone and debris slammed into him, forcing him to come to a stop as he snarled in anger, wondering who as fear started to tremble through his soul. I told you, you will not leave with your life, said Naruto. As the groan started to crack, Orochimaru snarled, you think you can kill me? Me? I am Orochimaru, the son, and you are just a pathetic, idiotic fool. You're nothing but a brat. You cannot stand in my way. Despite his mumblings and rants, Naruto said absolutely nothing. The Urchimar's statement as he just kept on walking, petrifying the snake even more. As Urchimar opened his mouth as snakes rushed out of it, he was already low on chakra. After that painful extraction, it took him flaring up his chakra trying to break it. He wasted a lot of it. The snakes rushed towards Naruto with swords in their mouths. As Naruto held his pants forward as he released a beam that exterminated him and ripped apart the ground. The force caused Urchimaru to slam through several trees as he cried in pain, feeling the effects of his arms. As Naruto kept on walking towards him, Urchimaru got back up. I will not be defeated, not by a mere brat like you, he said. Losing his composure and cool, seeing that Naruto was still calmly walking towards him and just looking him dead in the eyes, Urchimaru lost his cool. He was about to do something until Naruto gripped his arm. Orochimaru stared towards the arm that Naruto gripped onto, considering that he was a couple feet away from him a second ago. RIP! The snake saw him cried out as Naruto tore the arm out of his sockets with nothing but brute force. A spear of key formed on his other arm as Naruto sliced Orochimaru's other arm off before stomping into the man's chest. The snake saw him coughed up blood as Naruto broke many of his ribs upon contact. 
as he was sent sail as he smashed through a few of the thick trees within Kanoha as he crashed hard. He could not afford to shift his body into a brand new one as he was already too low on chakra and because of what Hirzen did as he could only get to his knees as he coughed up some blood he was in a really bad state as he saw several trees being blown out of the way by the aura around Naruto alone that golden brilliant aura just blowing things away as Naruto's eyes were dead set on him filled with nothing but anger and rage Blood poured out of Archimaru's wounds as he snarled at the brat in front of him. But at the moment he was unable to do anything as he was too weakened, forced to remain in this form. As Naruto stepped closer to him, and now you die, said Naruto, as he placed his hand to his sides. Ka! Archimaru got up as he started to run for his life. Me! As he started to move past trees, stumbling and falling as he got back up as he started to run ah me as Urchimar heard the primal scream of ha ah, as he turned to see the bright blue energy shutting towards him the snake saw he tried to move but it was hopeless the beam collided into him it was at that moment all the envoys arrived on the scene as they watched as Urchimar was erased from existence along with Jiraiya as well who came on the scene. As Urchimaru's body was evaporated, he was just erased, completely consumed and erased by the blasts. As Naruto stood there, his hands and body pulsing with energy, despite just killing the snake Sanin, he was still, he still did not feel satisfied as he looked up to the heavens and screamed. His energy shot out of him like a tidal wave, blowing everything away from him until he heard a voice. Big brother, it shouted, as Naruto turned his head towards the source. That was where he saw Mito, as he saw blood running down her arm. As she was being escorted by Neri and Samui. As Naruto stepped closer to her, Mito saw his hair and saw his eyes, but she didn't care about that right now. There were tears in her eyes as she just heard about the old man's death. As she stepped towards her big brother, the glow around him did not affect her as she stepped forward and hugged him as she cried as she held on to him trying to calm him down as she just hold on to him despite the state that she was in and the grief that she was feeling at the moment she hold him and just cried as Naruto blonde here slowly reverted back to black as he held on to his sister it's gonna be alright he said his voice finally coming out a bit softer than before as his eyes returned back to normal as he just held on to her she was already exhausted from her fight in the tuning exams and then she went and she fought the shikaku and took it down by herself with the help of kamabunta as she started to feel the exhaustion kicking into his arms as Naruto picked her up as he started to walk back to the village time skip unknown location as there were a couple of individuals that were currently hanging around as one of them spoke up first Zetsu what did you find there was a creature that was emerging halfway out of the ground his body was half black and half white and there was a phoenix fly trap over his head a Ruchimaru invasion on Kanoha failed he was able to kill the third Okage but he lost his life said Zetsu explain the man that spoke had ripple eyes. His body was a hologram as he spoke. There was a woman next to him, but she was silent. As there was also a masked man there in the flesh as well. An orange mask that hid his face. As he was wearing black clothing. It turns out that it was the brother of the Kayubi Jinjuliki. Going by the name Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. The one that we've been hearing about. The one that changed right Kage. As Zetsu spoke, his lip did not move. On the other hand, when the white one spoke, his lip did move. Go ahead and tell them about the blonde thing. You guys should have been there to saw it. One moment he was getting angry, next moment, boom, everything went blonde. It's here. And there was this blonde aura that surrounded his body. 
and he got all powerful. He decimated Urchimar forces one after another, his elite forces, his guards. Urchimar was running for his life. There was no way that he could take on the blonde man. As he walked towards him, Urchimar was scared, considering that it takes a lot to scare him. He was really, really scared. And then the blonde man proceeded to break him before he used a ability I'd never seen before, which eradicated him. The masked man spoke an ability that you never seen before. Black said to took over, yes. He has these strange abilities. We never really focused on him before, but his abilities are quite strange but yet powerful. He was able to cause damage to the surroundings by just raising his power it seems. And his hair can turn blonde whenever he get angry. He was able to outclass Urchimar in every way possible. Speed, strength and power. But I can sense no chakra coming from him at all. It's almost like he's a part of everything. What do you mean? The leader said. The power that he's using is not connected to nature but it's surrounding him like a life force. It's quite powerful. I'm not entirely sure what it is. But with that power that he has, he's quite destructive. And what about the Kyubi Jinjulki? The leader asks. She was able to take on the one tails by herself and defeat it along with a toad summon she's getting quite powerful we should see exactly how much powerful she's gotten and test this brother of hers the masked man said exactly Zetsu informed Kisame and Itachi that they are supposed to go to Kanuha and attempt to kidnap the Kyubi Jinjulke if they are able to take her it's a win-win but they should also test this brother of hers. And if he will be a threat in the future, he must be put down. Zetsu nodded as he sunk on the ground, making his way as the masked man and the leader continued their conversation. Meanwhile, the woman said nothing as she just remained silent as she watched the two interact until they split apart. When the masked man was gone, the leader cut the connection as he was looking through a set of eyes. Watching the rain fall in front of him, footsteps alerted to the person behind him as he glanced towards the woman. She looked troubled. Conan, what is the matter? You're awfully quiet. I'm just thinking, she said, about what he asks. We're going to be sending Itachi and Kisame to kill this little girl's brother and also attempt to take her life. What if they fail to take her? She would lose her brother. And Conan. You must not forget the plan. I have not said Conan. Then these are the things should not matter to you. We are fixing the world. And in doing so, there will be difficult choices that were prepared to made. I thought you already came to your senses about this. I have already, she said. It was just a mere thought. Don't let it happen again. She frowned at that, but she refrained from saying anything. As she just walked away, leaving the man by himself to watch over his village. As Kona was making her way, a thought drifted in her head when she was younger, when she had lost her parents. As she thought about that little girl, and now she was about to lose her brother, knowing Kisame. And if that boy was indeed able to kill Urchimaru, they would take him out. But they were doing this for the betterment of the world. And it has to be done. So with that she remained quiet as she made her way. Time skip at Kanoha. As Naruto sat on the Hokage's monument. The village was in the process of being rebuilt. The village was not in a perfect state right now seeing that they were not having a Hokage at the moment. But the advisor and the council was taking over as they were trying to keep things stable and steady until they filled the position of Hokage as Naruto sat where he was. He did not do anything as he just watched everything in front of him. Mito had been devastated about Herzen's death 
just like him. She knew that she had to be strong though, but she had to mourn as well as he attained his funeral. She had cried, Nuruk had cried as well, as he lost a father figure. The men had been nothing but kind to him, who always made sure that him and Mika was comfortable. And now he was gone, and he would never see him again. As Nuruk clenches his tight as he remembered in Forest of Deck, where that damp snake got away from him. He should have crushed him. He should have ripped him to pieces right there and then. But he got away. As Nurta felt someone appear behind him, the purse did not say anything. As they came and sat down. The place was silent for a while as the both of them just watched over the village. So, how are you holding up? The person finally spoke up. I'm fine, said Nurta. Look kid, I know that you and I aren't that close, close, but I wanted to know that I'm here for you, despite the past and the mistakes I've made. This time, I won't make those mistakes, and I assure you, I'm here for you. The voice of Jiraiya said, as Naruto finally turned and glanced towards him, not to be rude, but is there a reason why you're here, said Naruto? Jerry did not take offense to that as he knew that kid probably wants to be alone. Well, I kind of need your help. As you know, the village needs a Hokage. I figure with the state the village is in, said Naruto. So did they pick you for the job? With my spine at work, I can't, said Jerry. But that is where you come in. I want you and your sister to accompany me to go and find my teammate. As Nurta raised the eyebrow to that, Snavi, he said. I thought you said she wanted nothing to do with this village. She's been away for a very long time, but desperate times call for a desperate measure. It's time that she comes back, said Jaraya, and I'm gonna need your help to do that. Even if we force her to come back, we can't force her to work. No, I don't mean like that, said Jaraya. I just need your help to convince her to come back. What makes you think that me and Mito would be able to convince her. Well, she was friends with your mother and father. There's a lot that has been taken away from her. I believe that you can sympathize with her. And the both of you can help me convince her to come back. We can't have the village being deprived of Hokage for too long. And there's a certain person that wants the position. You mean Donzo, said Naruto. Jiraiya blinked in surprise. How did you... I've saw that man many times. Come in to speak to the old man. He has this weird vibes about him that I really dislike. As Nurta got to his feet. So where is she? Well, she's a distance away from the village. Let's go, said Nurto. As Jerry figured that this would be good. To get them out of the village for a while to clear their head. From everyone else in the village, Nurto and Mito was the closest to the old man. As Naruto was making his way down the stairs, he heard someone call his name. As he looked down, as he made his way to see Samoy, as she gave him a smile, she'll be leaving soon. As Naruto really wanted her to stay, especially in this time, but given the situation and that she was not from this village, he understood. But she hugged him before he could say a word, as she stepped back with a smile on her face. Guess what? I spoke to the Raikagi and he said I could stay here until a new Hokage was selected and I can be a liaison towards the two villages. You aren't leaving? said Naruto as she shook her head no. For the first time since the old man's death, a small smile came on Naruto's face here in that time skip. Sasuke was making his way down the road. Mito had said that she was leaving the village for a while. But she will be back soon, as she was going on a mission with Lord Jiraiya. But Sasuke was looking for some extra training from Kakashi, seeing that he had lost to that sand girl. In the end, Mito was the one that defeated her, and she allowed him to leave. They were being tricked by Urchimaru. In the end, she had changed him, just like how she changed many other people. Sasuke was consumed by heat when his parents had just died, but now. He felt less and less of that hate. 
Mito was one of his closest friends. He still wanted to find Itachi. He still wanted to fight him, but he was no longer that consumed by heat. Mito was always there. So for the time being, he was the one that was being there for her, as she had lost someone that was so close to her. And she was mourning. He had tried his best, but Sasuke was not that all front going with emotions, but he tried his best. She had thanked him for his efforts and at least trying. Even in her saddest moments, she found a way to thank him. It made him really appreciate her as a friend, as she was his best friend, and he could easily say that. On the other hand though, he did have feelings for someone else, as the idea randomly popped into his head. He didn't know when it happened, but it just started out of the blue. She became this confident, powerful Konoichi right in front of his eyes. She was no longer shy or anything, she was just so much powerful and confident. Bruising through the exam. Hinata Hayuka. Yes. It was Hinata. Most people would never thought that Sasuke would even look at her because of her shy nature and him being who he was, but she changed. She was confident. And she was a good friend of his. But every time he was around her, he did not let it show because he was cool enough to keep his feelings down, but he felt this feeling in his stomach. Which he was trying to deny, but he couldn't deny it anymore. As he phoned Kakashi at a random tea shop, and Kakashi was early. Kakashi. As Kakashi greeted Sasuke with a high smile, and how are you, Sasuke? You're early, said Sasuke, confused. What? Your sensei can be early for once, said Kakashi with a high smile. As Kakashi narrowed his eyes towards the tea shop, as Sasuke looked at him, well, when we're talking about you, yes, it's weird. I'm here because I want more training, said Sasuke. He had heard about Urchimar demise. Even though the snake freak was dead, this mark was still on him. It had been promptly sealed away by Jiraiya, as he had placed an extra layer seal over it. And he was told not to give in to the mark temptation. Despite the seal being over it, he could still feel it. He had spoken to Anku, and she told him just not to focus on it and keep his mind focused on whatever he was doing. And that is what he was doing, with Mito and Hinata there. They were like a support helping hand for him. As with them, he could not focus on the mark, but focus toward his goal that he was still intending to keep when he find Itachi. Meanwhile, the group was currently making their way, as Samui had tagged along, as Naruto wanted to be there. Jerry didn't have a problem with that, so they were currently making their way towards the next town. I never asked, said Naruto, but what happened with that sand girl? As neither of them had talked about the fight, as Naruto was too focused on what he was doing as he never even focused on the tail beasts, because if he had saw it, he would have jumped into the fray right away. Her name is Sahara, she's like me, but she's a bit more complicated. Her life, it wasn't an easy one. But I was able to knock some sense into her head and make her understand that she has family. People that actually care about her and she keep pushing them away, she will have no one. In the end though, she decided to wise up and allow her family to help her. I don't know what's gonna happen beyond this point, but she's pretty cool. And you know, Jinjoki is must stay together. I hope we get to meet again in the future. A small chuckle could be heard, as Mito looked over, what's so funny, it seems like you have a crush. What? said Mito, what are you talking about? As she looked towards Samui, well, you speak so fondly of her, and you speak of her in this delightful way. As Nurka raised the iPhone, she's a girl, she's just a friend, Mito said. It's our bond as Jinjulikis, hmm, whatever you say, said Samui. I'm just glad that you're happy. It's not like that, said Mito. As Jerry glanced towards Mito, who seemed to shrug it off as nothing but embarrassment, as Naruto placed a hand on his sister's head, I never figured that you like girls. But if you do, as long as you're happy, I'm happy. She slapped away his hand as she punched him. I didn't say I like any girls. She's my friend, so stop doing that. 
as he caused Nuru to the smile, as Mito saw him laughing for what seemed to be a long time. And not seeing him laugh, it made her sad and not seeing him laugh, even though it was embarrassing on her, it made her happy. As she turned her face with a huff, as Nuru to chuckle some more. As Jerry glanced towards him with the corner of his eyes, well, at least things were somehow returning back to normal. So with that, the team continued making their way. Time skip. As Mito had insisted that she get her room for herself. As she didn't want to be there, with the both of them out of the village and alone. She didn't know what they did in private quarters, but she didn't want to be an uh, interruption. As she was fine being in the room by herself. She had packed a few books with her, and there was a book that she was dying to read, well finished up on reading. Meanwhile, as Naruto was lying down on his back, Samui had her head rest on his chest. They didn't do anything, as she was just resting on him, as she listened to his heartbeat. Jerry had went out to get some information, and told him that he would be back soon. Hey, yeah, said Naruto, you're here. Why did it go all blonde? As Nurta glanced down towards her, she looked up. Why hasn't anyone addressed that so far? She asks. Given the whole situation, said Nurta. And I don't really know. I felt strange. Mito told me that my hair had went blonde, but I don't know why. How did you feel? She asks. There was this immense rush of power. For a moment there I almost lost my composure. What do you mean? It felt like I was going ballistic. Like a wild animal for some reason. But I was able to focus on my memories of you, Mito. And I was able to calm myself to gain a right state of mind. And also my anger for that damn snake said Naruto. It kept me focused. Can you do it again? She asks. I'm not sure. Probably yes, said Naruto. So that's a transformation that makes you a whole lot stronger, she said. Yeah, it seems that way, said Naruto. I've never heard about something like that before, have you? No. Well, considering that I'm one of the few people in this world that can use key, I'm not surprised. I wonder if Master Roshi knows anything about this. Oh, you're Master. So do you have any idea where he is? I think I can sense him, but I'm gonna have to go to a area that he's once been in or somewhere close to. So it's gonna be a bit hard, said Naruto. But as far as I know, he has most key than most other people. So I might, should be able to find him. You know, this can be a result from your biological appearance. As Naruto went silent. Oh, um. Sorry, I didn't... It's okay, said Naruto. Cutting her off. I never thought about it. But you're right. I'm not sure what this is, but I'm curious. Maybe I'll ask Jiraiya, considering that he was there in the beginning, said Naruto. As she gave him a nod. That is when Naruto felt something pass his door. As he looked up. What's wrong, she asks. I don't know, said Naruto. She pulled herself off of him. She was still in her clothing that she was wearing as neither of them were undressed or anything. As Naruto flipped out of bed, he placed his hand on the door handle and opened the door, only to see two men making their way as he stopped at Mito's door. As one of them knocked, Naruto blinked as he focused on the individual. As he was surprised when he saw his face, it was Itachi. Itachi, said Naruto, shock and surprise to see the man here, after all these years. As Itachi turned towards Naruto, as Naruto did not even focus on the large man to the side, but Samui did saw him though. Samui, being a blade user, had studied Kinjutsu and she knew that blade and she knew this man as well. He was Kisame. He was a tailless tail beast off. Kiri, Missy Ninja now. Mito opened her door she stepped out instantly, feeling something off. Moving to the side as she saw her brother. What's going on? 
It was then that she saw Itachi, and she was shocked to see him. As Naruto remember his interactions with Itachi when he was younger, Itachi was a very calm, calm person. It still shocked Naruto that he was able to kill his entire clan, not to mention killing his mother Mikoto. He did not get along with Fugaku well, nor did him and Mito because the man was just always stern and looking at them with a serious face but Mikoto on the other hand. She was kind, she was gentle and she was sweet. And Itachi killed her, as Naruto never understand why he did that. So this is the brat, huh? Judging from that weird hair shape, I doubt there's anyone else that have this hair shape, said Kisame, as he raised Samihata and placed on his shoulder. Samihata don't seem to be interested in you at all. You really don't possess any chakra, do you? As Samue pulled her blade, you on the other hand, as Kisame gave her a toothy smile. As Naruto stepped forward, what are you doing here? It, as he paused, when he noticed a cloak, as he remembered what Jiraiya told him. A casket, said Naruto. Mito clenched her fist. So you're part of that group now, she said. And you're after me as she glared at Itachi, who seemed surprised that she knew that. You have to come with me now, Itachi said. Come with you. Hell no, she said to him. And you're not going anywhere either. You did so much. You hurt Sasuke. I promise that I will help him have his revenge on you. Because you even killed your own mother, Mikoto. A sweet, innocent woman. And yet you stand here calmly without explaining yourself. But now that I have you in my grasp, you will talk, said Mito. As Kisame chuckled. Quite the feisty one, huh? Well, Itachi, is she gonna make you talk? You deal with him. I'll deal with her. As Mito shot chains forward, Itachi had to move instantly as they tore into the wall. As he was surprised at their speed, Kisame on the other hand leaped forward as he brought Samihata down. As Naruto raised his hand, boom! The ground on their feet shattered as Naruto held onto the blade. As Samihata burst out of the bandages, Naruto's body was reinforced with key, so they did not even scratch him. As the thing desperately clawed at his arm, as Naruto gripped into the sword, Kisame saw Samihata in discomfort as he brought his fist around. Naruto brought his fist around as well as the two fists collided. As Kisame applied chakra a lot of it to his fist, trying to knock the blonde down to size, but he didn't expect this violent outburst. The two fists created a small shockwave that blew the both of them back as Naruto slammed his foot down to stop his momentum. Samoy threw three corners towards Kisame, who used Samehata to deflect them. Itachi on the other hand burst into a flock of crows. As he appeared behind, Mito, he reached out to grab her but he leaped away just in time as a chain shot right through her back. As he landed, something flew past him. As he turned towards the wall, BAM! Kisame connected into the wall. Kisame groaned as he pulled himself out of the broken wall. This kid, they weren't lying, he's really something. As Kisame gripped Samihata, but the smile on his face seemed to increase. It's not every time that you see a kid this strong. I must say, I'm intrigued. Well then, brat, let's have some more fun. As Naruto snapped his gaze towards Itachi, we're going to talk, Itachi, said Naruto. But your friend doesn't need to be here for this. As Naruto held out his hand, Mito, move. She leaped out of the way as Naruto blasts a key blast towards Kisame, who brought Samihata up. Boom! He broke right through the wall. Samihata screeched out in pain as a key blast shredded some of its scales. Damage in the blade as Kisame crashed down into the street. Itachi turned his gaze back towards the three, surprised by how much Naruto had grown. Before he could say anything, though, Jerry arrived in a poof of smoke. Don't worry, the backup and the savior is here, he said, as he did a ridiculous pose, but the group chose to ignore him, though. 
Itachi realized that the odds were against him, looked towards the group as he looked over all of them, but his gaze lingered on Ruka for a moment as he made his way off. Meanwhile, back at Konoha, Sasuke was currently panting a bit. In front of him was none other than Hinata, as the both of them had been sidetracked while Sasuke was. Sasuke had heard that Kakashi had fell ill and he was taken to the hospital. Being who he was, normally he would have just made his way straight towards the hospital to find out what the hell was going on. Even though Guy assured him at least several times that Kakashi was fine, they didn't want to tell him that his brother was here and let him run off. So they had to lie to him. Luckily though, Hinata was passing by. As she had found Sasuke, she had heard about Mito as Mito had informed her that he would be leaving the village. She usually sparred Mito at these times, Sasuke a few times as well. And the both of them end up sparring for a couple of hours, resting and sparring once again. So that is the reason why Sasuke was not there, as he was unaware that his brother was even anywhere near the vicinity. He glanced over towards as she was drinking, a bottle of water, the glistening moonlight shined down on her and she looked so radiant. Her gaze swept towards him as he looked away. As Hinata narrowed her eyes towards Sasuke, who was looking at her a moment ago, who seemed like he didn't want to be caught. But she didn't say anything though, as she just drank the water. Meanwhile, back with the group. So those are the guys that you warned the Raikage about? Yes, yeah, said Jiraiya. So they will be coming after B, and Yujito Sensei as well. She clenched her fists. As Samui realized she has to get a lot stronger, to make sure that they did not take her Sensei in their project of kidnapping all tail beasts, and they did not take her little friend here as she glanced towards Mito. Naruto on the other hand was caught in a genjutsu the moment he had stepped out of the building as he would have chased after them. Usually normal genjutsu don't work on Naruto, Itachi had coated the entire place in genjutsu as he heard that Naruto could fly and he probably knew that it might be a chase. As Naruto had stepped into the town as he found himself re-entering Kanoha as it was dispelled though by Jiraiya before anything could escalate. Normal Genjutsus would not work on Naruto because of him having no chalk for them to bend to their control but Itachi had placed the Genjutsu over the area before fleeing to buy him some time as they had run away. Itachi had one of Naruto's weaknesses though. Itachi could directly affect Naruto's brain with that technique of his. As Jiraiya had told Naruto that the Sharingan had a different level that was able to directly target the brain, even though normal Genjutsu would not affect Naruto. If Itachi was able to place Naruto under an illusion that directly messed with his brain, it would affect him. That is why whenever he's fighting an opponent like Itachi, he will have to hit him hard and quick and end the fight, but Naruto didn't want that. He wanted to know why did Itachi just went crazy and kill his own parents. As Mito wanted answers and not to mention Sasuke wanted answers as well. On the other hand though they found Snaddy. As Naruto stepped into the bar. As he saw the woman he was not shocked after what Jiraiya had told him about her. Yet he had a bad feeling that something bad was gonna happen. But guys in the end subs right here. If you wanna see next parts and do like, subscribe, comment down below and turn on that bell notification as he posted. Remember to share all of your friends in social media platform. And stay tuned for the rest of what is coming your way. And I hope you guys enjoy each and every one of them. But I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.